When hackers try to escalate their privileges on a computer, they don't always need to go straight for the administrator user. Sometimes they can just as easily find juicy details in other user accounts. Things like passwords, credit card information, banking details, anything that might help their operation. And in this video, I want to show you how. I am inside Kali Linux, and I have gained access to another computer that I can remotely control with SSH, or the secure shell. But the thing is, I am just running as the user account. I can enter who am I, and I'm just simply the low privilege Joe Schmo user. Now, I want to know who else might be on this computer. So on Linux, I can check out the etc. password file. That is a forward slash for the root directory, etc. for the subdirectory, and the password password file. I zoom in on that and I can take a look. There's not just me as the user here, there's also an individual patch. I know my documents are stored in home user, but home patch is where everything is stored for that other patch user account. So I want to gain access to that directory. So from here, we want to understand what privileges our user has. Can we run any other commands as the administrator, the super user or root on Linux? Can we even potentially run commands as patch that target user? Or are there any programs or applications or binaries that we can run that we might have access to as another user? I'm talking about the set UID binaries. These programs, these commands, these things you can run on your Linux computer that will allow you to borrow the ID or identity of another user. We could see these ID values even in the output of the etc. password file. That 1000 or 1001, that is the user ID for my user or patch, the other. Now to look for these special set UID binaries, we could manually go hunt for them on the file system, see what's in the computer, or we could use other automated tools like LinPs, the Linux Privilege Escalation Awesome scripts. But I think just for our learning, we'll do this manually. So back in the command line, we can use a special command called find. Super simple, hey, we're just going to go find other files or folders or things on the computer. We'll wanna know where we're going to start to look. In this case, I'll say the root of the file system, and we're gonna add some special parameters or arguments where we're looking for things with specific permissions set. The configurations that might say, oh, you know what? 4,000 is the special unique number that says these are things that have a set UID bit set. Now I wanna look for anything really here, but I don't have permission to look through all of the ins and outs of the root of the file system because I'm not the administrator user. So we're gonna get a ton of errors. So we should send our standard error stream number two, redirect that out to dev null. And that way it won't be displayed on the screen. Now when I enter this command, you can see, okay, some user bin mount password, SU, whatever, none of these are particularly helpful because these all look pretty normal, natural for a Linux operating system. With that, it doesn't look like there are any set UID binaries that we can use. So we're out of luck. We can't escalate our privileges. But actually, there's something else we can still try. Something that isn't always talked about or is easily forgotten. While there is a set UID binary, there's another kind of similar rendition for a set GID binary. Or you're not implementing the user ID anymore, but you're stealing the group ID. Now, of course, there are tons of other ways we could escalate our privileges. We didn't even talk about pseudo commands or, I don't know, kernel exploits, whatever we want to try, but SGID, or set group ID binaries, are another thing that we can look into. So back in the terminal again, let's run a pretty similar command. We'll use find to look for, from the root of the directory, anything with permission set, but the new special number here I wanna use is not 4,000, but 2,000. And again, we'll redirect our standard error stream to dev null, and let's see if there's anything interesting in here. Now again, these are pretty similar, a lot of normal things that you might find on a Linux operating system, but one of them sticks out to me, and it might to you just as well. I'm chatting about find the exact same command that we're using to look for these sort of files, binaries, and applications. Here's the kicker. That find command, that binary program and application is built in or native to a lot of Linux distributions on the computer, right? It's naturally installed. So this is a trick that is really well known to a whole lot of ethical hackers, penetration testers, red teamers, bug bounty, what have you. This is living off the land. That means using the tools and resources already in the target environment 
environment to do our dirty work. Now, there are tons of resources to use and abuse these living off the land techniques, one of which for Linux is GTFO bins. In case you aren't familiar, this is an incredible resource that lists all the things you might be able to do with different programs and applications, but we can just as easily search for the find binary. If I type that in here, look at all the things we might be able to do, like, oh, potentially get another shell. But this is all given with the set UID premise. Can we still use this for set GID? And the group. In fact, we hadn't even investigated our user bin find command, if this application is what we think it is, right? Can I actually use ls space tac la to view the details on that? And yeah, it is. It is set in the group of the patch user. That's the target account that we want to break into. But the find command was only just like listing files, like looking through the file system. Can we even actually use that to try to read information, oh, pull out and open access files in other directories as that patch user or group? Take another closer look at the syntax for that GTFO bins page on the find command. Looks like we could just run find and actually supply some other arguments and parameters where we can execute something that we'd like. We could actually execute any other program, any other binary, like cat to read a file, just like we did with etc. password. At this point, we as the hacker have all the puzzle pieces. We know our secret weapon. We can use the find command to run and execute other things, even as that user and maybe read and access some of their special secret information for the patch user and their documents. And just to be clear, we would not be able to do that otherwise. If I take a look at my present working directory, pwd, I'm in home user. Now I can move or change directory into the slash home directory where we see, oh, my folder for my documents and the patch users there, but I can't actually change directory and move into it. I have permission denied. I'm not that user. I can't read or access anything in that patch directory, but now we know that we can with the find command. Remember when we used the find command and we specified where we want to start looking for files? We supplied just a forward slash at the very start to say the root of the file system? Well now, I just want to look for anything inside of home patch. The find command will have access to read this, and there it is. There's some special juicy information. Hey, maybe their profile details, bash RC for their startup, and the flag.txt that we want to say we have obtained and achieved and accomplished the objective here. Now, how can we read the contents of that file? Remember that exec parameter, right? Before we fire it up, hey, let me say, this is a capture the flag challenge, just a small distilled environment for our learning and education, but this is one that I created. I wrote this finders keepers task and exercise where Patch found a flag. He stored it in his home directory and should he be able to keep it with the joke and gimmick being, oh, find as the find command as the solution. I wrote this for the sneak fetch the flag competition and it was an awesome privilege to be able to co-host that CTF event with sneak. By the way, if you're interested in sneak, you can get started for free in seeing how they keep your code secure in products, programs, applications, and software that you create. Link in the video description. Big thanks to Sneak for sponsoring this video. And if you'd like to check out more write-ups or other solutions to different Capture the Flag challenges, that is also available in the description below. Now, let's do it. Let's put all the puzzle pieces together. Let's run this find command, as we know is our secret weapon, to say, oh, we want to look through everything in the patch home directory and their documents. So we want wanted to look for even a specific name, like the flag.txt file that we know is present there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use that other argument, tack exec, and I want to execute, oh, cat, to display and cat out that file. And I'm going to use a little bit of special syntax here where I denote, oh, curly braces, C open and close. So we say the argument, the listing, what you found when you were finding different files, cat out that, that that file. Now I want to close this with the backslash semicolon as you saw in the syntax for set UID bins and GTFO bins. Now I'll hit enter and there is our flag value. There it is, we did it. All we needed to do was super simple, run that find command because it is just a simple living off the land technique, but it's something that we needed to track down to begin with. And that was the task of the challenge to denote, oh, it's not set UID binaries in this case, but set GID binaries. 
Hey, I hope you learned something new. I hope that was a little bit of fun. And don't forget to check those set GID binaries, not just set UID. And that's okay to do that manually every now and again, but automated tooling helps where it can. Thanks so much for watching. Like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.